Hey everyone, today I'm accompanied by Lorenzo, a Charming Data community member who built a personal budget app using Dash and Plotly. In fact, I actually saw this Dash app that Loren Lorenzo created a couple of weeks ago on YouTube, and I was really excited about the capabilities of what, what he's doing with a Dash app and how it implements certain uh, Plotly figures in order to build this personal uh, budget app. So I invited him here today to show you what he's built. So in the next 10, 15 minutes, he's going to walk us through the app as well as some of the data fitting mechanisms that he put in place. Lorenzo, welcome. How are you? So hello, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, thank you, Adam, again for the invitation and the uh, opportunity to be sharing the project with the community. No, thank you. I really appre appreciate you coming um, and, and showing the, the community what you've built. Um, before you even show the, the demo and go into some of the, of the data, what, what motivated you, Lorenzo, to build this app? Yeah, so uh, I basically, uh, as you can see, it's a fairly simple application. So uh, I basically wanted to understand my uh, expenses and investment performance along the way. So this is basically a personal budget control dashboard or something similar, whatever you want to call it. Um, and uh, I actually started learning uh, Plotly Dash a few months back, and uh, I had a similar tool in Microsoft Excel. So I just figured it could be a good opportunity to, uh, at the same time as I was learning something new, some new tool, I was uh, actually um, solving a personal problem, you know? So um, yeah, I would, say, I would say that's the uh, main motivation. But uh, I would say also that uh, more than that, just being able to rely on this kind of applications um, could be very helpful in the long run, uh, not necessarily specifically on uh, like financial uh, uh, wise, like this one, uh, like yeah. this financial application, but in a more general sense, you know, like uh, like a self management perspective. So just being able to um, visualize your own data into the screen and eventually uh, gain some insights from it, I think it could be very helpful and very useful, uh, especially if you're trying to make your life a bit more uh, organized and sustainable and uh, and predictable, you know. Yeah. So uh, yeah, yeah. I would say that's, that's that's the whole point of 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 this application. And actually, I find that like that reason uh, that people uh, build Dash apps is usually one of the best. Uh, uh, the reason that leads to one of the best Dash apps. Like you built a Dash app that really helps you with with a challenge that you're facing in life or or a task that you want to automate to some degree in your life, uh, and then. It, it worked for you. It's it's the it's something that has helped you along the way, and now you're showing it, you you build it for the rest of the world to also see how you did it, which is usually again, like I said, the most helpful Dash apps that 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 I uh, that I showcase. Uh, so thank you for for sharing this with the community. Now, is this like real data? Because you put it or you're using some sample data? Because if this is real data, you have some uh, pretty good income there. <laughs> No, not yet. <laughs> okay. So someday, someday, I, 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 I think I'll, I'll get there. But uh, unfortunately, this is fake data. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, we still could could grasp uh, how how the, the, the. Okay. Well, cool. Well, I'd love to see. I know it's connected to Google Sheet. You're going to talk to us about the the data integration as well. Uh, I'd love to see um, a demo of the app. The floor is yours. Okay. So um, as you said, I think the, the most important thing to mention here is that uh, we are uh, currently loading the data from a Google Sheets. So in order to do that, uh, you have to uh, follow a really simple step-by-step -step process uh, on going all the way through um, um, a Google Cloud Platform and using the API. So you can eventually integrate the, the data that you see here into the dashboard. Or you can simply do it by uh, loading the data from a uh, for my simple CSV file. Uh, in this case, I, I chose to um, load the data uh, from a Google Sheets because uh, as the purpose for this dashboard was to use it in a, in a, like a regular basis, I just figured, figured it could be easier to uh, just uh, load the data here and, and uh, make all of the um, modifications over here. So yeah. instead of um, cost constantly being um, nece necessarily to um, to save the save the CSV yeah. file, so here it's just easier, you know. Yeah. Um, and, but just and to make sure, Lorenzo, like just to make sure, to, what you just said is is very helpful. Like if it's a CSV sheet, it's something as easy as. 
click on a, clicking on the Google Sheet link that we're going to share and just doing save as CSV. And if they want to use uh, like how you did it through Google Cloud, they can probably, you said they can go, uh, you mentioned before they can go to GitHub to see how the process works. Yeah, I actually have the GitHub over here. Um, so um, here I have all the files. Uh, so the, 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 the code, uh, which is running the, the dashboard. Um, I have the, the readme file over here, which is explaining all the details. And also we have the CSV over here. Uh, so uh, if anyone wants to, uh, to demo the application, uh, you can just come over here in the CSV. Although I already uh, left a, um, a link over here for this particular uh, Google Sheets. So you can do by either way, you know, like CSV Perfect. or Google Sheets. Perfect, yeah. thank you. Um, so yeah, as I, as I mentioned earlier, earlier uh, this dashboard basically aims in uh, providing information about uh, expenses and investment performance. So basically in this first row over here, we have uh, information related to um, expenses. So as I said before, it's a fairly simple application. Here we have only two drop downs. So the first one for uh, selecting the review period in which the user will like to assess the data. And uh, here, uh, choosing the macro category. So here, in this case, we have personal transportation and food expense categories, which are uh, displayed over here. So if you change uh, the selected period, it, it will change. And uh, by selecting uh, here the macro category, this chart over here changes. So uh, with these two charts, basically, the user can understand uh, how his expenses uh, is distributed across each macro category. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think um, what has been really helping me is uh, what I call this cash flow overview for selected month uh, table. So uh, it's a cash flow overview. So basically, uh, it's the balance between the, your income and your outflow. Um, and here, one important thing to mention is that a, I um, classified the credit, the outflow into two classifications. So the first one being either a credit or a debit outflow, and the second one, second one being uh, for personal and others. Um, so all of these details, as I said, are explained in the readme file, but uh, I'm just going to give a, a quick example here. So let's say if I go out with Adam and I pay him ice cream for any particular reason, I just don't have his money at the moment or something. So I pay him like a $20 uh, ice cream. It's not yeah. a personal expense, it's another's expense. So it doesn't really relate to my uh, expense behaviors. So yeah. that's why I made this uh, differentiation over here. So I uh, have the same thing for debit outflow, for example. So I have for personal and others. And uh, just to give a quick overview here, uh, credit outflow total is basically the sum of these two credit outflow for personal and others. And credit outflow accrued, I don't know if that's the, that's the right terminology to use, but uh, uh, basically if you buy a television, let's say, and you buy it uh, with installments, so you buy the first half, uh, the first invoice for this month, but you still have like future invoices. So uh, I would call it a credit outflow accrued. Probably there's, there's another um, terminology for this, but... Uh, that makes sense um, to me. Yeah, yeah. Um, because we, we have a lot of this in Brazil. I don't have an, if, I, I don't know if uh, in the States people usually do it that way, but uh, yeah, that's a, that's a, uh, um, like the yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, as I said, the same thing goes for debit outflow. So for personal and others, and here we can also assess investment contribution. Uh, so, uh, as I said, for a selected month. So if I change over here for, uh, June, 2024, this information here, uh, changes as well. And. As this is all uh, dummy data, uh, sometimes it can get like not real uh, as you yeah. would find it for your your personal life. Um, and immediately below, uh, we have a current balance overview, which has been helping me a lot because uh, let's say if you go all the way to your bank account application, your cell phone, you find a parent balance, um, which is the current money that you have available. Uh, so in this case, uh, for example, uh, $5,700 but you don't actually have that money because you still have to pay for current month invoice, for example. Yeah. So that's what's happening here. So this is, of course, is only related to current uh, situation. So uh, even if you change here, uh, the, the review period, it won't change this particular table over here. Okay. So uh, uh, these two tables, I would say, is, is good to, to keep track of your, of your current situation, you know, and being able to uh, to plan future months and understand how healthy I would say it's your yeah. uh, your financial situation. 
So um, one more thing to, to go uh, through is uh, that I eventually added this um, user's manual feature, which is this button. Uh, and here uh, you can, the, the user would have to, uh, the user could um, uh, add any kind of reminder uh, regarding on the uh, application behavior because I don't actually use this as uh, I was the one who developed the dashboard, but uh, eventually it could be helpful in order to uh, uh, be a bit more familiar over time with the application. So, What do you mean? Uh, Can you give me an, an example, Lorenzo? Like what is one um, yeah. sentence that we'll put in there? Yeah, perfect. So uh, I'm not going to go uh, uh, too much in depth on uh, the data fitting mechanism, but let's say uh, you um, you have an expense which is a credit for recurrent uh, expense. So, uh, for example, you could add here: uh, What happens if I if I if I uh, provide an entry with a credit recurrent or credit accrued, or how how these things actually uh, behave in order to show my information on the screen? Because okay. uh, uh, I believe in a variety of aspects still could be improved in, in the application, and sometimes uh, it's not too clear how the application behaves. And um, and so got it. Just for the sake of yeah, um, yeah. Um, but that's a good question. Um, so uh, we went through the first part, which is the expenses performance. And here uh, for the investment performance situation, so in the in the second row over here, let's say I have an investment contribution target of forty thousand dollars, and I set the deadline for August twenty twenty five. So we have uh, twelve months. We have one year to to uh, reach the, the deadline. So uh, here we can see the current contribution. So here we have eighteen hundred dollars, eighteen thousand um, dollars. Um, and we have pending uh, contributions till we reach target of yep. this value over here and the percentage done. So uh, here is basically to give like a quick um, a quick grasp of uh, your uh, your current situation regarding on your investment contribution target. No. Nice. So this is this is always stays the same, right? No matter if what month you view, this will always stay the same data uh, unless yeah. you contribute more money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't relate to to any of these drop downs over here. Uh, so uh, it just basically go to your data frame and 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 sum the columns in which yeah. you have uh, investment contribution. So pretty 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 straightforward. Um, here I uh, we have uh, two charts. So the first one on the bottom we have uh, expected con uh, we have historic contribution. So divided into expected or either a additional contribution. So uh, it is good to, to keep track of your of your co uh, contributions along the way and and how uh, how are you uh, keeping up with uh, with the target that you uh, eventually set you know Lorenzo uh, what happens there what happens there if the what is it 800 if the expected contribution is 800 but you were only able to give less like 500 um yeah uh, I haven't I haven't uh, thought about about this, but uh, you could eventually add uh, like uh, uh, change colors, you know, like put red. So uh, Got it. My target my my monthly target is eight hundred, but this this month I just couldn't do Reached it. Like it. Okay, five hundred. You know, yeah. Um, that's a good question. That's that's a few uh, feature that could be still added to the to the application. Um, so as I was saying, this uh, so the the upper part here of the chart, we can see cumulative uh, contributions. So uh, yeah, it's basically just showing uh, uh, along along each uh, um, along uh, along the way uh, your cumulative uh, yep. contributions. So, uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, one thing to mention here is that, um, as you can see, this is a very very simple approach to investment performance, as it does not give you any further information about um, uh, how your investment portfolio is distributed or uh, interest or any any kind of of this information. Uh, this obviously could be a a, a, a future uh, future project, uh, but yeah, I would say in general this dashboard is uh, is its purpose is to give you like a clear uh, view of your current uh, situation. You know, so um, yeah, yeah. As I said, no, this is this is could be. incredibly helpful. Like I a year ago before I built my own dash apps, I would have used this. Like how many how much money am I spending? Really? How much is the income? Where is the money going? Um, uh, how much is going to investment? See my target investment and how how far I'm, how close I'm to it. Very helpful stuff. Do, do you think you would um, 
uh, eventually build an app for like a breakdown of your investments. I have some in this stock, some in this area. Is this something that that is like a next stage for you or for any other uh, app user that's uh, Dash user that's using an app like this? Uh, yeah, I think definitely it would be like a, like a, a very valuable project. Um, I haven't uh, thought of uh, much deeper about this, but um, I would. I, I would say, is, is, as I said, it's a very, very, very valuable uh, application to, to develop because uh, the whole point here is just to, you know, get to visualize your own personal information. And this is yep. uh, what, uh, whatever uh, area in your personal life uh, that, that is, uh, I think it's very valuable, you know. And um, I actually saw a, a project that you developed, I think, if I'm not mistaken, about like investments, uh, portfolio or something. I don't quite remember, but uh, yeah, definitely that would be a future project. Um, and um, just so moving on, here we have uh, this table that I would like to, to mention. So this table actually does not relate uh, directly into expenses or investment performance, but uh, it's, it's been very helpful for me because let's say if I go out with, with, with a friend and I pay him dinner, for instance, uh, and I can set the status over here for uh, pen and income, for instance. So yeah. I'm waiting that eventually I get my, my money back <laughs> and, uh, and $35, for example. So yeah. here, this table is is um, uh, is uh, valuable, is uh, helpful in order to uh, help you keep track of your, of what is unresolved. You know. Okay. So you don't miss anything out. Um, and uh, we could have the same thing for, let's say, I, I have an entry for delivery food for pasta, but I don't actually remember eating pasta. So I can s just set it as verify. So I eventually verify and, and contact the restaurant or something and, and see if, if they're not mistaken or something. Yeah. Um, and this is, this is basically a, tool, a, a table that can provide you information about things that are unresolved. You know, uh, same thing goes for accrued invoice. So to keep track for your future invoices and pen and out flows, uh, uh, for example. So, uh, yeah. Um, Very nice. And I, this uses Dash AG Grid? Yeah. So for all of for these tables over here, uh, I use Dash AG Grid as, uh, that, uh, as Dash AG Grid uh, pr uh, like provides you more freedom in order to like iterate over the, uh, over the table here and makes things a bit more dynamically. So we can like, have filters over here, so I want to see like we can follow oh, like filters. Nice, yeah. yeah. Um, cool. Yeah. I would say that's it for the for the dashboard part. Uh, and I think, uh, as I said before, there are other parts that could be that we could go go along. But uh, as I said, all the informations and the files and all the the observations about the the functionalities are available in the README file and the GitHub repo. Um, so yeah. Oh, cool. Thanks, so And then, and then you also mentioned that um, uh, there is a part of the code that you wanted to to share with us. Yeah. So uh, if you take a look after uh, in the code, uh, you see it's a pretty straightforward code, um, like pretty simple, and and it's like uh, uh, like the common structure for for um, dash dash uh, codes, uh, huh? dash applications. So uh, as I said before, you can either load the data from a a Google Sheets or a, a CSV file. Uh, but the thing that I wanted to highlight here is this section, so defining dashboard inputs. So these inputs are basically this target uh, contribution that we have over here for $40,000, for instance, the deadline, and also the text that comes in here. So in order to provide and visualize this, um, these values and this information in, uh, in the dashboard, the user would have to come directly into the code and here uh, input the investment target and the, the, deadlo the deadline uh, target and also write here the, uh, the manual text, you know. So um, um, the rest of the following lines here, are pretty, as I said, pretty straightforward. So uh, it's basically creating all of the elements that don't actually require any 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 callbacks, yeah. right? And then you just go to the app layout, some callbacks here for the button and uh, for the elements like uh, like this one, uh -huh. like this. Um, here just creating the the uh, the output elements and then executing the, the server. So once the the code is executed, the uh, uh, this link pops up in the terminal and you're good to go. I don't know, Adam, if you have any 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 other questions. No, no, 
uh, I wanted to thank you, Lorenzo, for the uh, great presentation, for building and sharing this app with the rest of the community. Uh, as I said, I even would have used it like a year ago before I built my own apps. Uh, it's very helpful for understanding your budget, um, understanding your income, uh, inflows and outflows. And, and potentially one can build on top of this, like you mentioned, Lorenzo, like a portfolio investment uh, app so that they understand where their money is going and how their money, their investments are doing. So thank you again for sharing this. Uh, we will share under the, uh, the description of the video. We're going to share the GitHub link that Lorenzo mentioned uh, with uh, the app and the Google Sheet uh, uh, data, the sample data, and also Lorenzo's LinkedIn if you have any questions for him. Uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. And Lorenzo, thank you again for joining us. Uh, thank you, Adam. And thanks, everybody. Uh, and if you have any suggestions or any further questions, uh, please feel free to, uh, to reach out. And uh, I'll be very pleased to address uh, your suggestions and, and questions.